A powerful storm system is set to impact the United States over the next few days with significant severe weather expected, including widespread damaging winds, very large hail, and several tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we are coming off of a pretty big day yesterday of a lot of severe weather across the upper Midwest and the Central Plains. And this morning, we've had a weakening area of storms across the central plains which this is one of multiple rounds of storms that we are going to see today in the central plains because in fact we are expecting a potential derecho later today back over in Colorado Kansas maybe even Nebraska Oklahoma and even back into Missouri which that could cause the threat of widespread damaging winds and tornadoes and then tomorrow that storm system is going to move into the Midwest Ohio Valley and back into the southern plains where all hazards of severe weather will once again be on the table now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and we'll begin with today which is Tuesday and we have a level four out of five moderate risk of severe weather now in place across parts of central and southwestern Kansas and also an enhanced risk of severe weather that goes from eastern Colorado back into western Missouri where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table today including the potential for widespread destructive damaging winds as high as 100 miles per hour and we could actually have a derecho today also on the other hand we do have a larger marginal and slight risk of severe weather that extend all the way back up into the Midwest, also as far west as Wyoming, and another little marginal threat back over in the Mid-Atlantic for today. So the biggest concern, once again, will be damaging winds, and if you're in that hatched area in eastern Colorado and Kansas, that is where we can anticipate damaging winds as high as 70 to 100 miles per hour throughout the afternoon and evening hours as a line of thunderstorms will form later this afternoon. And additionally to that, we also have a threat of large to very large hail, especially if you're back over in central Kansas. And as I alluded to to a minute ago, we are going to see multiple rounds of storms, one of which will be a line of storms back over in Colorado that'll move into Kansas, and then another one that's actually going to form during the mid to late afternoon that is also going to produce the threat of very large hail. There's also a chance for a few tornadoes today. This is also going to come from our line of thunderstorms, but there may also be a few discrete cells that fire off later today in Kansas that could also pose the threat for a few tornadoes, and if a tornado were to happen today, a strong tornado cannot be ruled out. And then on Wednesday, our threat of severe weather will will shift further to the south and east where we have another level three out of five enhanced risk of severe weather in place from central and southern Michigan back into southeastern Missouri and a large slight risk that goes all the way back over into Oklahoma and that marginal threat goes over into North Texas where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table tomorrow including the threat of damaging winds which will be scattered to numerous especially in the Ohio Valley large to very large hail is a possibility I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple storms produce up to tennis ball sized hail back over in parts of Illinois Indiana and maybe even Northwest Ohio there's also a chance for a few tornadoes so notice how we have a large 5% tornado risk that does include areas like St. Louis Missouri going back into central Indiana like Indianapolis and just outside of Detroit I also would not be surprised if this were to get upgraded to a 10% tornado risk in a future outlook back over in eastern Illinois and northwestern Indiana where a few tornadoes do appear likely there's also a low tornado potential as far south and west as central and southern Oklahoma this does include areas just outside of of Oklahoma City. And then as we go into Thursday, our threat of severe weather will continue to shift east into the east coast where we have a large slight risk of severe weather in place. From the mid-Atlantic all the way back into New England, we're scattered to numerous damaging winds, a little bit of large hail, and a few tornadoes are possible. And then a large marginal threat of severe weather is in place for the northern plains in the Midwest where isolated hail and wind will also be a possibility. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather over the next few days. And we'll begin with today, which right around lunchtime to about two o'clock, we're gonna start to see a few storms fire off back over in Wyoming and Colorado and this might not look like much initially but this is what's going to turn into a large line of thunderstorms that'll produce the potential for widespread damaging winds as we go later into the afternoon and evening hours eventually by around three to four o'clock we're gonna have to watch a couple of different areas one of which is going to be a bit more of a conditional threat back over in central Kansas where a couple of discrete supercells may fire off and if these do fire off the potential for tornadoes and as well as very large hail will exist right around five to six o'clock we also have a potential for discrete supercells firing off back over in southeastern Colorado and even over into the Texas panhandle and if this happens we do have enough wind shear where we could see a few tornadoes in both corridors and then we're also going to be watching for that line of thunderstorms to develop and this is again around six o'clock by around seven to eight o'clock we'll be watching for a line of storms to form here across Kansas where damaging winds will be the biggest concern despite it not looking super organized here on the HRRR I do think we are going to see a pretty uh, widespread area of damaging the winds no matter how it looks and with a setup like this we can easily still see 
significant damaging winds, even with low precip supercells or even a low precip line of thunderstorms. By around 10 to 11 o'clock tonight, this tornado threat will likely continue out in front of our line of thunderstorms. It is still relatively conditional. It's going to depend on there being really not much convection here across Kansas this evening. But again, a line of storms will continue to push across Kansas as well with widespread damaging winds. Strong tornadoes would be a possibility out of these discrete cells. And then by around midnight, this all turns into a full-blown line of thunderstorms moving across Oklahoma, southern and southeastern Kansas, and then eventually by around 4 to 5 in the morning, this entire line of storms will be tracking into southwestern Missouri, in addition to eastern Oklahoma, where damaging winds will continue, and I think the severe weather threat is done by around 7 to 8 in the morning, and then this will eventually lead to our next threat of severe weather as we go into Wednesday for the Midwest Ohio Valley and all the way back into the southern plains. And then if you're back over in the Midwest for today, we are expecting a few scattered showers and thunderstorms, mainly with a hail and wind risk throughout the afternoon and early evening hours. Generally speaking, we're not expecting really any tornado threat here in the Midwest today, but that really changes as we go into Wednesday, as we are expecting the remnants of this line of storms tonight to actually develop into a low pressure system as we go into tomorrow afternoon across areas like Iowa and Minnesota. And we are going to have a lot of spin, especially in Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, where if we have any discrete supercells throughout the afternoon, there will be an elevated potential for tornadoes. So by around three o'clock, we are expecting the potential for a supercell or two to try to develop around or just south and west there of the Chicago suburbs. And any storms that develop in this area will be able to produce the potential for not just hail and wind, but also the threat of tornadoes. On top of that, there will be a large cluster of storms ongoing back over around and just to the west there of St. Louis with hail, wind, and a few tornadoes being a possibility. By around four o'clock, we continue to see a bunch of storms firing off around that low pressure system in Illinois and Indiana. And then by around five to six o'clock, these storms are going to be tracking across Indiana and southern Illinois. Now, notice how we go from discrete supercells during the early to mid afternoon hours and then eventually into the early evening. This turns, turns into a full blown line of thunderstorms, which means that we are likely going to be seeing a higher tornado threat initially. And then as we go into the late afternoon and early evening, this should turn into much more of a big wind threat across Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, even as far south as northern Arkansas. There is still a potential, though, for embedded tornadoes in this line of thunderstorms. And then as we go later into the evening hours, this line of thunderstorms will continue to push to the east. I think there will still at least be a potential for a tornado or two, even in Michigan, during the evening hours, so around 7, 8, 9 o'clock. But I think overall, the line of storms further down to the south will actually be falling apart, so the damaging wind threat will probably not make it much further than areas like Cincinnati. After that, I think it weakens out, but at least as we go into the early evening hours, there will still be a remnant threat of severe weather with a couple of tornadoes and damaging winds remaining a possibility. And if you're back over in the Ozarks or in the lower Ohio Valley, we are expecting a numerous area of thunderstorm activity to develop just after lunchtime across areas from Tulsa, Oklahoma, back through St. Louis, where damaging winds and hail and localized flooding will be the biggest concerns. But there will be a low chance for a tornado or two embedded in this cluster of storms during the early to mid afternoon hours. We may even have a few rogue supercells that try to break off from that little segment that could also produce a threat for an isolated tornado during the mid to late afternoon. And then by the early evening hours, we have a messy area of thunderstorm activity with mainly a line of storms producing scattered damaging winds across Indiana, Ohio, all the way back through the Mississippi River Valley near Memphis. But overall, I think the tornado threat will be pretty low back over in Kentucky and Tennessee. Same thing for Arkansas. The biggest concerns being hail and wind. And then back over in the Southern Plains, we'll have numerous severe weather possible across Oklahoma during the mid to late afternoon, mainly south and east of Oklahoma City. Biggest concern being wind and hail. And then we should have a cap in place back over in North Texas. But if that is overcome, we may see a big hailstorm or two in this area. I don't think we're going to see much in the way of tornadoes, but definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. Even if a future radar like the HRRR does not show storms, it does not mean you will not see storms. And then on Thursday, our threat of severe weather will continue all the way into the northeast in the mid-Atlantic, where we are expecting potentially scattered to numerous severe weather to be in play. By around four o'clock in the afternoon, we'll have a bunch of storms out there across New York, Pennsylvania, as far south as Virginia and North Carolina. The biggest concern with these storms will be damaging winds, but I would not be surprised at a few tornadoes, especially across northeastern Pennsylvania, central and eastern New York, and maybe even western Vermont during the afternoon and evening hours. So definitely be ready for that. By around seven to eight o'clock, we'll be talking about more of a line of thunderstorms tracking across New England, and a few supercells are going to be possible even back down near Maryland and Virginia with damaging winds hail and a low tornado risk existing. This line of storms will fall apart by around 10 o'clock as it tracks across New Hampshire and Massachusetts, and then we'll be pretty much done with this threat as we get closer to midnight on Thursday. So overall, we are expecting a pretty active day on Thursday here across the Northeast, and there is a chance of a live stream, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Further down to the south and mid-Atlantic region, I think more than anything, just isolated to scattered severe 
storms will be a possibility. Hail and wind being the primary concern. A low tornado risk may exist with the activity in the Carolinas and also back into Virginia. But overall, I think wind and hail will be the dominant threat in this region during the mid to late afternoon and early evening. And then after Thursday of this week, this large storm system will finally be out of the country and ridging is going to build across the eastern periphery of the United States. On the other hand, we are going to have mid-level troughing that's going to develop back over in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains. It is uncertain whether we are going to be seeing severe weather every single day, at least to a significant extent, but I do think on Saturday there will at least be some level of severe weather across the Northern Plains. On Sunday is the day I'll be keeping an eye on for a potential of some severe weather across the High Plains. And then on Monday, there is a slightly better chance of severe weather back over in a lot of areas, including the Midwest, the Central Plains, and perhaps even back over into the Northern Plains. So this is an area that we're going to have to watch for as we go into the weekend and early next week, but it looks like this active weather pattern will likely continue throughout most of next week as well, with plenty of chances of severe weather. Also, we have a big heat wave coming to the United States this weekend as ridging builds across the East Coast. We are going to have a lot of warm air building, especially across the Midwest, where temperatures could make it well into the 90s as we go into Saturday and Sunday. These are the forecasted high temperatures right now for Sunday. We could literally have low 90s as far north as northern Minnesota. That will also extend even into Canada. So very warm weather is coming for almost everyone east of the Rockies on Sunday. Really just about to begin summer here in a few days. So this is very fitting to start summer. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely have another video tomorrow talking all about the severe weather upcoming Wednesday and Thursday. And on top of that, we'll be live later today and tomorrow covering the severe weather outbreaks that are in store. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates.